confronted him, shouting, What's the problem? Why are you throwing things around? Without hesitation, he charged toward me, not wasting a moment. When he reached me, he seemed about to lay his hands on me. Instinctively, I threw a powerful punch at his face. It didn't exactly bring him down, but it caught him off guard, and he stumbled backward, bumping into his van and falling onto the ground. To put things in perspective, I'm 5'8", and had some extra weight, so I wasn't defenseless. But he quickly got up with renewed anger and began throwing punch after punch at me. I retaliated with a flurry of punches, but the exchange left my arm feeling weak and spaghetti-like. My vision was blurred, and all I could hear were my stepdaughter's screams and my cousin yelling for help from an upstairs window. As I wiped my eyes, I realized I was bleeding profusely and my nose was broken. My cousin stood in the front yard, holding a metal chair over her head, while my stepdaughter had been taken inside with our neighbor's kids. John, still unrestrained, continued to scream and try to attack me. It felt like a chaotic scene from a Jerry Springer episode. I rushed upstairs to find my cousin's husband, who was calling the police from a window. However, he seemed somewhat helpless in the situation. When I returned outside, John had vanished. The police arrived, and I was questioned before being taken to the hospital. After a brief stay, I was released and about to head out to pick up my ex, who was unaware of the incident. But there was a problem. I couldn't find my keys anywhere. We searched extensively, but they were nowhere to be found. It crossed my mind that John might have taken them before he fled. However, I was puzzled because my phone was with my keys, and he hadn't taken the phone. I decided to call the police station and inquire. The police informed me that they had found my keys on John, confirming their description, including the green New York Yankees back keychain. They asked if I wanted to press further charges, and without hesitation, I agreed. Although there was a no-contact order in place, they couldn't force him to leave the house. It was up to my landlord. Fortunately, my landlord acted promptly and kicked him out, but not before he could squeeze in some stalking and harassing behavior. In response to the situation, my kind neighbors turned their security cameras towards our house. One morning, John's girlfriend stood in front of our house hurling nasty insults at us. Reviewing the footage, we could see John lurking just out of sight at our door. It was as if she was the bait, and he was the hook. Thankfully, we didn't engage with their provocations. The security cameras captured other creepy actions as well, such as John crawling around my car without any apparent purpose. They eventually moved out bringing peace back to our neighborhood for the remainder of our time there. I still occasionally see them around town, usually walking and looking very angry. I started looking for a raccoon or a porcupine or anything really. I couldn't see any animals or hear any twigs cracking, which I thought was weird. There were no signs of a person out there either. As soon as the last thought crossed my mind, I swear to this day, I heard someone from deeper in the woods. I heard a female voice call out to me. Hello, why don't you come over here? To say I jumped was an understatement. I sprinted full throttle towards the lights. I even tripped over a log. Ripping open my pant leg and scratching up my shins, I made it to the bathrooms alive, feeling painful and kind of stupid. Once I was at the comfort station, I did my business and talked myself out of it being anything unnatural, like the good biologist that I am. I figured I must have just misheard an animal or something. I didn't believe in the paranormal. So worst case, it was an actual person. I didn't feel like getting jumped by a weirdo in the woods while I was out at night by myself. So I made the decision to 
take the longer route back on the open road and skipped that shortcut. As I passed by the entranceway to the woods again, I can only tell you what I heard, but I swear I heard it clear as day. I heard the woman's voice whisper, Hey, come back. I think that was the fastest I've ever run in my life. I'm a little bit embarrassed to say I don't use camp bathrooms at night by myself anymore, but I can't explain what happened. Luckily, my family got a trailer the following season with an indoor bathroom included, so it hasn't really been an issue ever since. This happened quite recently. It was midnight, and I was at the train station waiting for my train to arrive when I noticed a very tall man walking my way. He was carrying some sort of luggage, and as he came closer to me, I noticed he was really struggling to carry it. It looked rather heavy, and oddly enough, it was leaking some sort of thick liquid. As this guy approached, he ordered me to take the bag from him. The tone of his voice was very aggressive, and he didn't sound sober at all. Taking a closer look at the man, I noticed he was covered in dirt all the way up to his face and had cuts on his forearms. Struck for words, and in a panic, I started to quickly walk away from him. My train began to arrive, and the man continued to follow me, calling out things I couldn't quite understand. I jumped onto the train as soon as I could, and the door shut behind me. He was stuck outside, pointing at me and yelling even more gibberish. The train began to depart, and he began to slam his. Cautiously got up from my gaming chair and moved closer to the window to get a better view. I could hear my heartbeat pounding in my ears as I watched. The man reached our front porch, and for a moment, I couldn't see him. My mind raced with all sorts of possibilities, none of them good. I considered waking up my parents, but something held me back. Maybe it was fear, or maybe it was curiosity. Then, to my surprise and terror, the man appeared again. This time, he was standing on our front porch, just inches away from our front door. He seemed to be trying to open it, but it was locked. I watched in horror as he fumbled with the doorknob, his face obscured by the hood of his jacket. I knew I had to do something, but I was frozen with fear. I fumbled for my phone and dialed 911, whispering my address and the situation to the operator as quietly as I could. I didn't want to alert the intruder. As I spoke to the operator, the man continued to try and force his way inside, banging on the door and rattling the handle. I could hear him muttering to himself, but I couldn't make out what he was saying. Minutes felt like hours as I waited for the police to arrive. I watched as the man eventually gave up and started to walk away from our front porch, disappearing into the blizzard. I let out a sigh of relief, but I knew he could still be out there. The police arrived shortly after and searched the area, but they couldn't find any trace of the man. They told my parents and me to stay vigilant and lock all the doors and windows. That night, couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about the man in the blizzard, and I couldn't shake the feeling that he had been watching me from the darkness. I never found out who he was or what his intentions were, but that night has stayed with me as a chilling reminder of the unknown dangers that can lurk just beyond our front door parents about the unsettling events of the previous night. They were understandably concerned and called the police to report the suspicious activity. The police came over and took a statement from me. They also reviewed our security camera footage. But unfortunately, the cameras did not capture anything significant due to the heavy snowfall and low visibility. 
Despite their best efforts, the police were unable to identify the man or determine his intentions. They increased patrols in our neighborhood for a while to ensure our safety, but no further incidents occurred. I couldn't shake the feeling of unease for quite some time after that night. My parents and I took extra precautions, such as installing additional security measures and being more vigilant about locking doors and windows. I also made sure to keep my bedroom window fully covered at all times. To this day, I still wonder about that mysterious man in the blizzard and what he was doing at our home. The incident serves as a constant reminder that safety and security should never be taken for granted, even in the comfort of our own homes. I was sorry, but I couldn't give him a ride. I explained that I had my kids waiting at home, and it wouldn't be possible. As I said this, I noticed that his demeanor changed slightly. He seemed a bit more insistent and started to take a step closer. My heart began to race, and I could feel my instincts telling me that something wasn't right. I quickly ended my call with my husband, telling him I'd call him back later and tried to step around the man to enter the store, but he continued to block my path, his tone becoming more urgent as he pleaded for a ride. At this point, I felt extremely uncomfortable and unsafe. I realized that I needed help, so I loudly called out to a nearby store employee who was collecting shopping carts in the parking lot. The employee immediately turned and approached us. Seeing the employee coming, the man suddenly backed away, muttering something about finding another ride. He quickly walked away, disappearing around the corner. The store employee, a kind woman, asked if I was okay and if I needed assistance with anything else. I thanked her for her help and quickly went into the store to pick up the Pedialyte and the prescriptions. I made sure to keep an eye out for the man while inside, but I didn't see him again. I left the store and got back into my car, feeling relieved that the situation had been diffused, but also shaken by the encounter. I called my husband to let him know what had happened and drove back home to be with my kids. This incident served as a reminder that safety can never be taken for granted even in a seemingly safe neighborhood. It's crucial to trust your instincts and take precautions when approached by strangers, especially when you have loved ones to protect. I was grateful that I had the presence of mind to call for help and that the store employee was there to assist me in that moment of need. Explaining the situation, they were both understanding and let me stay there while we waited for the police. Within a few minutes, the police arrived at the store. I gave them a description of the man, explained what had happened, and mentioned that my husband was still on the phone with me. They assured me that they would look into it and advised me to stay inside the store until they could confirm that it was safe. I thanked the pharmacist and the customer for their understanding and support. The police officers were quick to respond and took my safety seriously. My husband remained on the phone with me throughout the ordeal, providing me with reassurance and guidance. After a while, the police returned and informed me that they had patrolled the area but couldn't locate the man. They offered to escort me to my car when I was ready to leave the store gratefully accepted. Once I was safely back in my car, I drove home, feeling relieved that the situation had been handled by the police. I shared the updates with my husband, and we both agreed that it was a frightening experience. But I had made the right decisions by seeking help from others and not complying with the man's demands. This incident served as a stark reminder that personal safety should always be a top priority, and it's essential 
to trust your instincts and seek help when faced with a potentially dangerous situation. I was grateful for the support of the pharmacy staff, the customer, and the police, which helped ensure my safety during this unsettling encounter. A go, and I've already had a crazy encounter. On my first night in Bangkok, I decided to explore the vibrant nightlife. I was in the Khao San Road area, known for its bustling streets and numerous bars. I was enjoying the lively atmosphere, trying different street foods, and chatting with fellow travelers I'd met at the hostel. It was around midnight when I noticed a man who seemed to be following me. At first, I brushed it off, thinking it was just a coincidence in the crowded streets. But as I continued walking, I became increasingly aware that he was indeed tailing me. His presence made me uneasy, and I could feel my heart rate rising. I decided to test my intuition by taking a few random turns, but he continued to follow me closely. Panicking, I realized I needed to find help or a safe place. I quickly spotted a nearby group of tourists who were laughing and having a good time. I approached them and explained my situation, asking if I could join their group for a while. They were understanding and welcomed me in. As I joined their group, I looked back and saw the man who had been following me standing at a distance, watching us. The presence of the group seemed to deter him, and he eventually walked away. I stayed with the group for a while enjoying their company and feeling safe. Eventually, I thanked them for their help and continued my exploration of the night market, being extra cautious about my surroundings. That night, I learned the importance of trusting my instincts and seeking help when I felt unsafe. While it was a scary experience, it also reminded me of the kindness of fellow travelers who were willing to help a stranger in need. It was a valuable lesson early in my backpacking journey, and I vowed to stay vigilant and prioritize my safety throughout my travels. Overpower me, he started driving the car away from the club, and I was in a state of panic, realizing that I was being abducted. As we were driving, I frantically searched for a way to escape or signal for help. My phone was still in my purse, and I knew I had to get to it somehow. I pretended to be more intoxicated than I actually was, hoping that he would let his guard down. I started slurring my words and acting disoriented, and the man seemed to believe my act. He became less attentive, thinking I was incapable of resisting. This gave me a small window of opportunity. When we stopped at a traffic light, I seized the moment. I reached into my purse as discreetly as possible and managed to grab my phone. I quickly dialed the emergency number for the country and pressed the call button. I hoped that even if I couldn't speak, they would trace my location. As the call connected, I pretended to be on the phone with someone, slurring my words and saying things like, yes, I'm in a car with a stranger. I don't know where we're going. I hoped that my feigned conversation would alert the emergency operator to the situation. The man driving the car seemed to realize something was wrong and demanded that I hand over my phone. I refused, holding onto it tightly. He started yelling and became more aggressive, but I was determined not to give up my only lifeline. Suddenly, I heard sirens approaching from a distance. It was the police. I quickly opened the car door and jumped out while the car was still moving, risking injury but desperate to escape. I rolled onto the pavement and saw the police car pulling up behind us. The officers jumped out and the man was apprehended. I explained everything to the police and they took me to the nearest police station where I provided a statement and received assistance. They also checked the man's car 
and found evidence that he had malicious intentions. I was extremely fortunate to have escaped that harrowing experience with the help of the emergency call and the prompt response of the police. It served as a stark reminder of the importance of staying vigilant, especially when in unfamiliar environments. And the critical role that quick thinking and seeking help can play in ensuring personal safety. I'm truly sorry to hear about your terrifying experience. It's clear that you handled the situation with courage and quick thinking, which ultimately led to your escape and safety. Your decision to jump out of the car and seek help from a passing motorbike taxi was a smart and brave move. It's completely understandable that such an ordeal would leave you feeling shaken and cautious. Trusting your instincts and prioritizing your safety is essential when you're in unfamiliar environments, especially when traveling alone. Please remember that you did the right thing by seeking assistance and reporting the incident to the authorities. It's also wise to avoid potentially risky situations in the future and prioritize your personal safety above all else. If you decide to visit bars or clubs again, consider doing so with a group of friends or trusted individuals, and always be cautious with your drinks. Your experience can serve as a reminder to others about the importance of staying aware, being cautious, and having a plan in place to ensure personal safety while traveling. I hope you can find some comfort in the fact that you made it back to your hotel safely and that you learned valuable lessons from this ordeal.